How's it going guys? Shape here and welcome to the channel. This video is going to cover what I have found to be the best gold farming methods in patch 8.3. These might not be the best for you depending on which server you are on, but currently for me these are what I have found to be the most consistent ways to farm gold right now. This is part 2 of the video so if you guys wanted to check out the other method, here is the link to that video. Most if not all the farms mentioned in that video are still vile at this point so definitely check that out if you guys have some time. These farms aren't in any particular order as depending on your server, your gear, and what professions you have available to you can differ which method to focus on. I would suggest looking into the professions you don't have and getting those as they're always good ones to have so you can maximize your profits. So with that said, let's hop into it and find out what those methods are. Be sure to turn on your notifications, make sure you have that bell rung, and drop a like so you don't miss any of my future content. If you have any questions, drop a comment or tweet at me. Also, be sure to drop a comment on what your go-to gold farm is. Our first method is going to tie quite a few different farms together as I've been able to maximize my efforts in these and really have some huge profits to show for it. As I mentioned in a few videos, I think that the Taltazar skinning to leatherworking farm is one of the best available farms right now to be doing. But I think I have actually found a way to combine another method to make it even better. To start this farm, you're going to want to do the same clear Natal Dazar and kill all the mobs that are skinnable, or at least the ones that are all lumped together in the middle of the map and gather them up and AoE them down. I usually do this in two pulls and then reset the dungeon to keep going until the 10 lockouts an hour is hit. Make sure you're using the Dark Moon Firewater Potion to skin faster as you're going to want to do this as fast as possible. On my Demon Hunter I was able to get the runs to around 2 minutes a clear, totaling to around 20ish minutes a lockout. Even if you can't clear as fast as me, you should definitely be able to do this at a decently geared character in under 30 minutes. Once the lockout happens, I used to either send everything over to my leather worker and make the materials, then maybe head out to Vale to do the skinning farm there, but what I've been doing recently is hitting the lockout and sending the materials over to my leather worker, but instead of making the fist weapons, I'm making the shimmer scale arm guards. Now why would I do that? They sell for much less to a vendor than the fist weapons. Definitely a valid point, but I'm not going to be selling them to the vendor. Instead, you want to send these arm guards over to another character if your leather worker isn't an inscriptionist as well. Once your inscriptionist has the arm guards, you're going to want to scrap them all in the scrapper. I was able to craft over 250 arm guards in one 20 minute lockout, and after scrapping all of them down, I came out with 38 expulsum, almost 400 shimmer scales, and 350 bloodstained bones. Now you could easily go back and turn these into even more arm guards and keep repeating the process, but for the purpose of this video we're going to stick with the 30 expulsum for 20 minutes of farming. As you guys know, expulsum isn't the easiest to come by and is used to craft rare materials. The materials you're going to want to make from this is the crafted trinkets from your inscriptionist. All the trinkets are currently selling at auction house for around 2000 gold each. The second piece of the puzzle you're going to want to farm out is the Xenanthan herbs to mill down into the inks that the trinkets need. Since the multi-boxers have killed that economy, it really isn't worth farming herbs anymore to make profit as the prices are just so low. You will also need ultramarine inks, but these sell for almost nothing on the auction house so you can either go and farm up some river bud or another fast BFA herb and make these yourself, or just buy them off the auction house. This is why having an inscriptionist is so important as you can just mill these down and turn them into inks and actually make huge profits. Mass milling Xenanthid you will get around 12 to 16 pigments that you turn into the inks. So you'll need about 60 Xenanthid per trinket which really isn't that much at all because on average I'm able to farm almost 100 Xenanthid every 10 minutes. Once it is all said and done you will profit around 76,000 gold for your trinkets. My auction house is averaging around 3 trinkets sold per day of each different trinket, so it might take a few days to sell them all, but that's very minimal work for such a huge profit. I haven't tested this out yet, but it might be even more profitable to just buy all the inks and keep farming the expulsum instead of farming all the herbs yourself. If anyone does or has tested this theory, please let me know in the comments below. Now staying with your inscriptionist, we are going to talk about the second method of making huge profits right now with inscription. If you have been sitting on a lot of BFA herbs because the market is terrible and you don't want all your farming to go to waste, then now it is the time to mill all those herbs down and turn them into inks. The items you're going to be looking at to sell are the War Scrolls, Tome of the Quiet Mind, Vantus Rooms of Nylotha, and Certain Glyphs. Now the first three items sell fairly quickly on the auction house, and the glyphs are hit or miss. 
I would focus on the glyphs that change a character's appearance or a character's pet appearance as these usually sell the fastest and are the most profitable when they do so. If you guys decide to go and farm the herbs yourself, then my go-to route for farming the herbs to mill down is in the tier guard sound. I have covered this route in other videos because you can get an insane amount of herbs here in just a short amount of time. You will even get a decent amount of anchor weed that still sells pretty decently on the auction house, so it's just a bonus to farming here. Currently on my realm, there are over 100 scrolls sold of each kind each day, 15 Vantus runes, and over 100 tomes of the Quiet Mind sold every day on the auction house, so there's definitely still some demand for these items. If you haven't leveled Inscription, now is definitely the time, as Inscription will become even more profitable when people are starting to buy the Dark Moon cards again. If you still haven't been convinced that Inscription is a good option, then don't worry, I have another method that is also in high demand right now. This was definitely a lot better like a week ago until this method was leaked, so I'll let you guys in on the secret now in case you didn't hear it before. The Enchanted Elementium Bar is the one used to craft the legendary items and they're selling very nicely right now. You need 10 bars to create the legendary item and that's going to be roughly 70 to 80,000 gold on most servers. So you can definitely make some huge profit for a couple hours of farming off of this one. First you're going to need a miner that has max level vanilla mining. If you don't have one of these, then no worries, it isn't too hard to level one up. The second piece of this is you're going to want to head out to the Black Wing Lair to obtain the uh, Goblin's Guide to Elementium. This item is dropped by Master Elemental Shaper Crixix. He is located pretty far into the incense and you'll find him just before the last boss. Kill him and you will get the recipe. Now before heading out there, I would suggest you be level 295 in mining, which is the highest you can get without smelting Dark Iron Ore. The catch to this is this is the only place you can learn Dark Iron Smelting from a quest in the Black Rock Depths instance. You will also want to bring 2 Star Rubies, 10 True Silver Bars, and 20 Gold Bars before you make your way out here as well, as that's what the quest will need to be complete. Now you don't have to do it this way, but instead of making multiple trips back out to this area, it will save you most time to knock everything out at once. I will link a guide in the description that I found to be very helpful in leveling your mining from 1 to 300 for your guys reference. Now after you finally get level 300 and you can smelt the bars, this is where the fun begins. Head to Winter Spring to farm Thorium Veins for about an hour. You are looking for Arcane Crystals out of these deposits. 10 Arcane Crystals will be enough for one bar. You will have to transmute the Arcane Crystals into Arcane Bars, so send these over to your Alchemist. Also, a really helpful tip is to make sure you have Transmute Master Unlock on that Alchemist as this can add some extra bars if you get the proc. Not a huge deal if you don't, but it's very easy to get and it is essentially free bars. Now the rest of the materials needed to smelt the bar can be found in Molten Core or just bought off the auction house. I usually just buy them off the auction house as they're not very expensive and heading back out to the burning steps again is just too much effort. These next two methods have been brought to my attention by my community as on part one of the video people said these farms were definitely worth a mention. The first one we're going to cover is the 2x4 farm in Suramar. I have talked about 2x4 farms in some other videos, but those farms were focused around the mounts. You could average around 5,000 raw gold an hour with those farms, but you were really there for the mount drops. If you got your hands on one of those, then you were going to be in for a big payday. The Suramar farm has the same exact concept as you want to get two groups with four members in each group to hyperspawn the adds and AoE them down. The only difference with this farm is you're going to make double your raw gold per hour, as here I was getting upwards of 10,000 raw gold per hour while I was doing this farm. Not only is that double the raw gold per hour, but you're also going to be getting a ton of cloths from these mobs. You can either sell this to the auction house for a few thousand extra gold, or if you're a tailor or have a tailoring character, then you can send the cloth over to them to turn into the silk weave pantaloons. Make sure you're a rank 3 in that though, because that would be the most return for your investment. If you do that shuffle, then you're going to get a heck of a lot more gold per hour and average between 15,000 to 20,000 gold per hour here. After doing this farm a few times, I am convinced that it's definitely worth the time to do as it might be one of the best farms to be doing right now. There are a few different spots in Ceramar that people are doing these, but here is where the most farms are happening. Just go to your custom group finder and type in Ceramar and you will see a ton of groups most likely doing this. Now the final method on the list isn't really a farm per se by definition, but if you are geared and can carry other players through content then this is an extremely profitable one. Depending on your server you can sell Vision 5 mass carries for around 150,000 gold per run. I was very skeptical about this one for a while because you would always see players spamming in chat, but in a way it's just like the auction house where you have to outwork your competition to sell. 
Once I got that through my head, I decided to solely dedicate a few days to compare the hours I set in trade spamming versus the actual time I was carrying someone through a vision. To my surprise, it never really took too long for someone to whisper me and I was able to finish these runs in less than 30 minutes. Even if you spend most of the day spamming in trade chat and only end up doing a few runs a day, it is still a very profitable way to be making gold right now. Over the course of 4 days doing this and averaging 2-3 to three runs a day, I was able to profit 1.8 million gold. You heard me right, 1.8 million gold for just carrying people through these visions. I was completely shocked at how efficient this was and in my opinion for very little effort. The reason it is so popular right now is you can literally almost pay for gear at this point with the WoW token. 150,000 for the 5 mass clear is only a little more than what you can pay $20 for the WoW token now. Players are willing to either spend their hard earned real life money or in game money to gear up fast and not waste any time getting into in game content. I think this creates some more problems in itself and definitely makes the whole Raider IO score mess that much more frustrating, but that's a discussion for another time. Now, with all that said, this is definitely not for everyone and you have to be very geared to complete a 5 mass vision with carrying someone since they're dead the whole time until you engage the last boss. However, if you have the gear and the extra coalescing visions then I highly suggest you check this method out as it might be the absolute best way to make gold right now. Heck, you could do this method for a few weeks and get your long boy as long as the prices are staying the way they are now. Well there you have it guys, part 2 of the best gold farms to be doing right now in patch 8.3. I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget to let me know any other gold farms you're currently doing that are successful. Please drop a like if you enjoyed the video to show some love for the channel and I'll catch you guys next time.